Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're talking about how you can play a song by the Rolling Stones called Honky Tonk Woman. And it starts out with some really cool percussion intro, actually, and you may want to think about kind of finding some, some sounds on your guitar, kind of working that cowbell lick in the bass drum. But but then when our, our guitar comes in, it comes in on a G major chord, and we play G major. First finger goes to A string on the second fret, second finger on the low E string on the third fret, and the third finger goes to high E on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord, and it sounds really, really happy. And you can kind of work kind of that rhythm at the beginning, that down, and let's see, down, 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 down. And what I'm doing is kind of doing a down, and then kind of a kill it idea with the right hand. So I'm going down, kill it, down, 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 kill it, down, kill it, down, 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 kill it. Or you can even kind of use just the B and the G string. Kind of, kind of implying your G chords. You may want to kind of think about using smaller chords there. And then there's a cool guitar lick that comes in where you go second fret on the G string and do a slide to fourth fret. So I'm kind of playing two and doing a slide to, to the four. You could kind of do this as a bend too, but it, I don't want to break my strings today. Um, so we're going to play second fret on the G string and kind of slide to fourth fret. And then we're going to do that same thing again, but then slide right back to second fret and then do a pull off. So it's kind of a slide to four. And then slide to four, slide back to pull off lick. And then we go to two on the D, and then open G, and then two on the G, open G, two on the D, open G, and then two on the G, and then open G twice. So all together we got two, four, two, four, slide to two, pull off, two, oh, two, oh, two, oh, two, oh, two, oh, oh. And then our verses come in and actually are around the G major chord. And then we do another G major chord. And then we go to a C major. And the way you play C major, first finger is going to go to the B string on the first fret, second finger on the D string on the second fret, and third finger on the A string on the third fret. And if you kind of strum all those together, that sounds a C major chord and it sounds really, really happy. And then from the C major, we're going to be going back to G major. And then we go to an A major chord. And the way you play A major, first finger is going to go to the D string on the second fret. Second finger on the G string on the second fret, and third finger on the B string on the second fret. This is a big party on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, then that sounds an A major chord. And then from the A major, we're going to be going to a D major chord. And we play D major. First finger is going to go to the G string on the second fret, second finger on the high E string on the second fret, and third finger on the B string on the third fret. And if you kind of strum just the D, G, B, and E, kind of the skinny four strings, that sounds a D major chord. It sounds really, really happy. I'm kind of just shooting for just the, the skinny strings there. And then from the D, then we're going to be going back to G major, and another G, and then C, and another C, and then back to G, and then a D, and then back to G, and another G. But a lot of times with a song like this, to make it more interesting, I like adding something called a strum pattern. And one of my favorite strum patterns for a 4-4 four, four like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. And one of the reasons why I kind of like that strum pattern is I do it consistently, <laughs> for one. But, but the other thing is it kind of frees you up if you get really good at that with the right hand to kind of add the voice to what you're doing. And especially if you're playing out solo, actually, it can be a little bit more interesting than just the guitar parts actually through the tune. So it's kind of like covering the, the drum parts with the rhythm. But anyway, so, so we could kind of take that and just try it a lot on, on the G chord. We could go down, down, up, up, down, G, down. that through our verse progression we have G with down down up up down G down down up up down C down down up up down C down down up up down G down down up up down B down down up up down C down down up up down D down down up up down G down really just kind of mixing up a, a couple of things we were just doing. So we tried our chorus with that strum pattern. We'd have G with a down, down, up, up, down, D with a down, down, up.
through the song actually kind of alternating between your verse and your chorus. Now there are some really cool licks, especially th through the verses actually, and you can kind of simulate those kind of starting off on that G, and you can even go back to that intro rhythm, that G, 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 for your G chords. And then when you get to the C chord actually, like around the C chord, there's this little lick where we kind of play the C, and then there's a first fret on the high E string, kind of that F note gets added to the C chord, and then we go back to the, e, to the C chord. So if you wanted to, you could even kind of do it down on the C, and if you take your first finger and kind of flatten them over the top two strings, this would almost be considered like a, a C sus chord. You could kind of get that lick in. So it'd be kind of C with a down, C sus, C. So you may want to kind of play around with that. And then when we get to the D chords, actually, there, there's uh, there's some, some licks around another suspended chord. Um, so around the D chord, like if you took the D and kind of put your pinky on the high E string on the third fret, well, um, kind, of, kind of with that D and the G and the B and the E all together, that's something called D sus. So now I got first finger on the G string, second, second on the high E on the on the on the second, but I'm not really using that, that note. And then third finger on the B string on the third fret, and the pinky on the high on the third. So you can kind of work that same idea there where you got kind of the D sus, or D, D sus, D. And then there's this cool little guitar lick that kind of comes in there where you play third on the low E string, and then do open A as kind of a hammer on the second fret, and then open G, and then kind of go back to the second fret on the A string and kind of do a pull off back to the open A, and then back to low E on the third. So you got three, open a two, hammer on G, two, oh, pull off three. So you may want to kind of play around with that too, kind of that D, D, D sus, D, three, oh, two, oh, oh, two, oh, three. And then, the, so, so if we tried that actually, you could kind of take that idea and kind of work it through the tune. So you could have that G with kind of the down, 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 down. C with a down, C sus, C, G with a down, 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 A with a down, 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 D, D sus, D lick, and then G, C, C sus, C, G, D, G, of play around with, with, with that idea and there's some really cool lead guitar parts that kind of come in on that last G chord actually and the first one you would go 10th fret on the high E string and kind of do a bend on the 10 and then play some more tens and then let the bend kind of come back to 10th fret so I'm kind of pressing into the guitar and, and up at the same time and then kind of letting it kind of come back down to 10. And then there's another lick that's really similar actually that happens on the second verse that's kind of like that where you go 10th fret on the B string and then high on the 12th fret twice, and then back to the 10th fret bend, and then we go high on the 10th fret twice. So you got 10th fret bend on the B, 12 on the high E, 10th fret bend, high E 10, 10. But, but something else I would think about adding to the song too actually is bass notes. And a lot of times on that first down of the down, down, up, up, down, you could throw in a bass for the chord. So for instance, on the G chord, your low E string would, would kind of be your bass note for that chord. So if you're kind of filling it in, especially if you're thinking about adding a voice, this kind of simulates playing with a bass player. So now you're kind of thinking bass guitar. So you got low E bass, down, up, up, down, G with low E bass, down, up, up, down. And on the C chord, you got the A string for your bass. So C with an A bass, down, up, up, down, C with an A bass, down, up, up, down. And then when we get to the A major, we got an A string for the bass. So A bass, down, up, up, down, B with an A bass, down, up, up, down. And on the D chord, you got the D string for the bass. So D with a D bass, down. that through that next verse. We have G with low E bass down up, up down G with low E bass down up, up down C with an A bass down up, up down C with an A bass down up, up down G with low E bass down up, up down B with an A bass down up, up down D with a D bass down up, up down D with a D bass down up, up down G with low E bass down up, up down G with low E bass down up, up down C with an A bass down up, up down C with an A bass down up. Down, up, up, down, to the D bass, down, up, up, down, to the D bass, down, up, up, down, to the D bass, down, up, up, down, up, and 
if we took that bass idea and then tried it with the next chorus, we'd have G with low E bass down, up, up, down, G with the D bass down, up, up, down, G with low E bass down, up, up, down, G with low E bass down, up, up, down, G with low E bass down, up, up, down, G with the D bass down, up, up, down, G with low E bass down, up, up, down, G with low E bass down, up, up, down, up. Now there are some other chords and some other voicings for these chords that you may want to experiment with too, especially if you kind of dig on these sounds. So it's a, a different G major actually, you could kind of keep the first finger on the A string on the second fret, second finger on the low E string on the third fret, and you could take the third finger and go to the B string on the third fret, and the pinky on the high E string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that's another way to play G major. And actually, anytime you, you ever see G major in a chart, actually you can use that G voicing instead of the other one. And instead of the C major, you may want to experiment with something called a C major 9, which actually might be a little bit easier, especially when you're starting out, to get to, where you take the first finger and the second finger and kind of move them to the D string and the A string. So now i got one on the D second, second on the A string third, third finger on the B string third, and the pinky on the high E third. And that, that is called C major 9, and a lot of times that substitutes for a C chord. Sometimes that can kind of depend on the, on the chart or your ear. <laughs> Um, and instead of the A major, you may want to play around with something called A7 sus. Because actually, it's, it's kind of working off of that same idea of keeping the third finger and the fourth finger on the E and the B on the third fret. Where you kind of take the first finger and go D string second, second finger goes to the G string on the second fret, third finger stays on the B string on the third, and the pinky stays on the high E string on the third. And if you strum all those together, that's called an A7 suspended or an A7 sus. And then when you get to the D chord, actually, you can even play around with that D to the D sus idea we were talking about if you wanted to. The cool thing about those particular voicings is your third finger can be a guide finger through the entire tune that way, because it never has to move. So your third finger can kind of stay in the same place for all four of those chords. So we try to, our, our, our next verse actually kind of with our bass down, up, up, down, up in those chord voicings, you'd have G with low E bass down, up, up, down, G with low E bass down, up. With those voicings, we have G with low E bass down, up, up, down, G with D bass down, up, up, down, up, G with low E bass down, up, up, down, G with low E bass down, up, up, down, G with low E bass down, up, up, down, G with D bass down, up, up, down, G with low E bass down, up, up, down, G with low E bass down, up, up, down, up, and kind of playing around with that D sus idea around the patterns so you may want to kind of play around with that too. Now something else that kind of comes to mind around that, that C sus idea actually that they do is that C sus really is all about the F chord. So if you wanted to, using that same voicing that we're kind of using for the C major 9 or rip something really close, you can play something called an F major 13 <laughs> by taking the first finger and going to the G string on the second fret, second finger on the D string on the second or on the third fret. Third finger on still on the B string third and the pinky on the high E string on the third, so it's still kind of working with kind of that idea. And that would be called an F major 13, I guess. We're playing the root and the third and the, the six, and we're playing the nine of the chord. So I don't know. Choose, choose, choose your name while it's right. Um, but you could kind of throw that in on the C chord. So like on the C chord you could have that down, down, up, F with a down, up, and then back to the C. idea around that kind of working off of that, that C to the C sus idea. So we trotted that idea on our C chords. We'd have G with low E bass down, up, up, down, G with low E bass down, up, up, down, C with an A bass down, up, up, F, C with an A bass down, up, up, down, G with low E bass down, up, up, down, B with an A bass down, up, up, down, D with a D bass down, up, up, down, up, D with a D bass down, up, up, down, G with low E bass down, up, up, down, G with low E bass down. Bass down, up, up, down, up. And that bass 
supposedly that verse form kind of works for our solo part too. And there are a lot of really cool solo licks actually through the tune. Actually, there's kind of two lead guitar parts that kind of kind of trade off uh, licks through the tune. But there, there's some licks that, that 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 we could go through to kind of find a way to kind of go through it. So there's some really cool licks actually that we could kind of throw in. So we could do ten. We could go tenth fret on the B string as kind of a bend, and eighth fret on the B, and then four more bends on the tenth fret on the B. And then go back to the eight on the B, not on the G, eight on the B. And then this is a cool little blues lick where we could go seven to, to eighth on the B is kind of a hammer on, and then six on the high E. And then we do that again, seven to eight, hammer on on the B, six on the high E. And then we could go to D on the tenth fret four times. And then we go to eighth fret on the D, and then back to the tenth fret on the D. And then when, when kind of the A chord comes in, there's this cool little lick where you take fourth fret on the B string and kind of do a hammer on from, or a slide from four to five on the B string. And then we go six to four on the G string as kind of a pull off. And then seven on the D. And then we go back to that four as kind of a six slide, four six slide on the, on the G. And then back to fifth fret on the, on the B string. So we got four, five, six, four, seven, four, six, five. And then we could go for, for the D chord, we could go seven on the G string, and then do six on the B as kind of a slide to seven, high E five, and then seven on the B, seven on the G string. So all together we got 10th fret bend, eight, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 8, 9, 8, 7, 8, 6, 7, 8, 6, and then 10, 10, 10, 10, 8, 10, and then 4, 5, 6, Back to that 10th fret bend on the B string, and then 8 on the B, 9 on the G, 8 on the B, 10 on the B, and then 2 8s on the B string, and then 8 on the B, 10 on the B, 8 on the B, 10 on the, on the B, that's kind of a bend, and then we go back to the 8 on the B, and then 9 on the G, 8 on the B, and then we got an 8-9 hammer on, on, on the G string, and then 8 on the B, and then 9 on the G, and then 10 on the D, so that's kind of our C chord. And then we go 9 on the G string, and then 8 on the B, and then 9 on the G, 7 on the G, and then 10 on the A. So we got, let's see, we got 10, 10, 8, 9, 8, 10, 8, 8, 8, 10, 8, 10. kind of throw in 10th fret bend on the B string, 8 on the B, 9 on the G, 10th fret on the B, 8 on the B, and then 7 on the G string, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, and then at the end kind of do an 8, 9 hammer on the D string, and then end on the 10th fret on the A. So we got 10th fret, 8, 9, 10th fret, 8, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7 8, 9, 10. So all together, you got 10 bend, 8, 10, that you could kind of throw in and then from there we'd be going into our outro chorus and actually our outro chorus ends up kind of repeating our chorus so we tried that with our bass down up up down up we'd have G with low E bass down up up down G with the D bass down up up down G with low E bass down up up down G with the low E bass down up up down G with the low E bass down up It's kind of a down, 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 kill it to kind of end the tune. So you'd have G with the bass down, up, up, down, G with the D bass down, up, up, down, G with the bass down, up, up, down, G, 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 G. 
But that's the basics of how you can play Honky Tonk Woman by Rolling Stones. So good luck!